Original Sound Bites. I'm Brandon Penny, the managing editor of The Signal. And in this special edition, we'll be talking about the recent mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, gun laws in University of Houston, Clear Lakes, campus safety, and of course, the Texas campus carry law. Joining me today on this panel, um, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves, maybe say your name, your major, and your organizations or anything you're a part of. So we'll start with you. So, what's up, everybody? My name is Justin Murphy. I am a reporter for The Signal. I'm a senior communications major, and I'm also the student body president. Hello, everyone. My name is Troylin Griffin II. I am the assistant editor for The Signal, and I am a comm major. Pleased to be here. Hi, I'm Natalie Garcia. I'm a senior environmental management major. Hi, what's up, y'all? This is Jordan Chavez, I'm VP for Turning Point USA, UACA. I'm sorry, UACL chapter and majoring in uh, business management. Hello, everyone. My name is Raj. Uh, I am the president of ISA and also the student ambassador at Office of Student Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I'm majoring in computer science. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Uh, so first off, on February 14th in Parkland, Florida, Nicholas Cruz was arrested for using an AR-15 rifle to open fire inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School for three minutes, killing 17 people. Cruz had previously been reported to local authorities and the FBI regarding disturbing comments and behavior. The 19-year-old was expelled from the high school in 2017 for, quote, disciplinary reasons. This mass shooting has sparked nationwide movements, including the Never Again and March for our lives. Today, February 28th, the students attending the uni- attending the high school officially resumed classes. So first off, what were your initial thoughts upon hearing about the Parkland mass shooting? What were your initial reactions? Well, I think my initial reactions was, you know, obviously it was a tragic event and all, and I believe, you know, reports have been saying there have been like so many school shootings in just the beginning of this year. So when this one happened and it was such an extremely bad one in terms of casualties and all, I think that just showed how, you know, it really is a major issue that's going on. And it was just really tragic. Uh, for me, I, I mean, same. I mean, it was, I was sad, like, oh my God, this is it's happening again. But I didn't react. I didn't want to fully react, like, I guess, emotionally. I was waiting, all right, the guy was sickle, obviously. Let's, let's put that on the table, but I wanted to wait for more info because I didn't want to make any, you know, I don't want to uh, point the finger. I just want to say, all right, I'm going to wait, see, you know, more info, and then I'm going to, you know, more, I'll, you know, have a better, you know, opinion or judgment on it. Uh, it was obviously very disturbing when uh, we hear anything like something like this happening anywhere in the world, not just in the United States. Uh, and I would be more concerned uh, if I think from the perspective of an international student where something like this happens in school or in college and then uh, sometimes the parents are, or the family is not even here. Uh, so that's something which is concerning in terms of the campus safety. Uh, so it was disturbing for me. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking, right? Um, you hear news like this and you become reminded of the lack of safe safe spaces that we're um, experiencing, like, I can't feel safe in school anymore, or church, or at a concert, or at a movie theater. Um, And I think at times we become numb to these situations because they do happen rather frequently, um, or more frequently than we would like. Um, So when an event like this happens again, it's just absolutely heartbreaking to be reminded that, you know, we're not safe. Yeah, I would agree with Natalie. Uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me was the fact that I haven't done a school again. Um, and the fact that schools seem to be like a common area for this to occur. And it's like we're just trying to go and learn. And then this is just, uh, it's just tragic to think that, like you were saying, where, where are we safe? It kind of just puts that thought in your head. So with these movements that have been happening, aside from their purposes and, and what they're meant for, what are your thoughts on the overall student activism aspect of it? What are Do you think it would even bring about change to whether it be gun laws or school preparedness? What are your overall thoughts on this? I mean, I think it's brave. I'm proud of them. Like, maybe nothing's going to happen from this. Because, I mean, if that, I mean, we saw that with Sandy Hook. I mean, 
no gun laws are going to come into play after children get killed, then I mean, I'm not sure what to think is going to happen after this. But I'm just so happy to see them using their voices and to like make a political statement and, you know, maybe nothing comes of it, but at least they're starting that conversation. Yeah, I think um, something that millennials and Gen Z are starting to realize is that we do have a voice and that they can use their, we can use our voice in political matters and not just in mass matters that are nothing, that mean nothing or and mean nothing in the lower, in the grander scheme of things. But um, there's definitely a lot of people that are starting to rise up from that are 18 and un, 18 and under, um, mm-hmm. even I would say up to the age of 25 and, and younger. Yeah, I agree with uh what both of you have said, how basically, you know, this is showing that uh, young generations do have a voice. And I also think that, you know, about whether it's going to affect or cause change or not, I think maybe we should maybe wait and see because you never know. I think history has shown that protesting can do a lot more than we think, like whether it be protesting or activism. But I think overall, it's pretty good that they are deciding to take some kind of stand and make themselves be heard. That and and how informative they are. You know, I follow some of them on social media and it's really empowering to watch them like do the work and to go out there and have their voice be heard and to be informed on political matters. Um, you know, I wasn't like that when I was their age. And so it's really enlightening to see that and to show, you know, older generations that like we can be a part of this and be on the same level that they are. Well, I mean, I think every American citizen should have, you know, their voice heard. I mean, no matter what, you know, kind of opinion or statement it is, like everyone has a right to speak yeah. their mind, no matter what it is. And, you know, it's great that these kids can, you know, whether it was this issue or something, you know, mine or something small, you know, it's, we're not going to disregard them just because they're kids or they can't vote or nothing like that. But I think whenever it comes to actual policies being made, I think we should take into account of the information that is given and what is actually correct. And I'm not saying that, you know, they're, if we're going to make policies, like we need to, you know, really look at the information that's, uh, that's out there and make policies based on that rather than, you know, emotional responses. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying what these kids went through doesn't, you know, is nothing and we shouldn't have to make a law just because you know someone died but when we, when we do make laws we need to make sure that you know they're, they're logical and you know they doesn't infringe on anyone but again it doesn't you know it's it's, it's a nothing bold is probably the word which i would use for this generation and something related to something like this and it's also heartening to see uh, some of the political leaders supporting the youth uh, them recognizing that this is the generation which is going to take us forward and then their voices are supposed to be heard. Uh, so I think uh, th- this generation understands that uh, not thinking about the results but still going forward and then trying to bring about a change is something much more important than the results. So this whole student activism thing is it's really interesting to see because I know when I was younger, I in high school, I would never have had the guts to do anything like this, no, regardless of whatever the movement is. So it's really interesting to see and seeing how it it'll, will play out, whether it's, you know, history will repeat itself and maybe it will be for naught or maybe it will cause a change. But that's definitely something we'll have to look uh, look forward to and see what happens. But moving on to gun laws, uh, in 1791, the Second Amendment was established within the Bill of Rights stating, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Under federal law, the minimum age to purchase from a licensed dealer a handgun is 21, while for a long gun such as an AR-15 is 18. Additionally, to purchase from an unlicensed dealer, the minimum age for a handgun is 18, while there is no minimum age for a long gun. Under Texas law, as of January 1st, 2016, those with a concealed handgun license may carry a handgun unconcealed. Long guns do not require licensing and are not required to be concealed, but must be re- but must be carried in a non-threatening manner. However, while Texas colleges allow for campus carry, the gun must remain concealed. In addition, President Trump has made statements regarding equipping teachers who are experienced with firearms with guns. So first off, what is your personal stance when it comes to gun ownership in America? I think that it's, 
it's something that we all have the right to have. That doesn't necessarily mean that we all should, must have. Mm-hmm. Not everyone, not everyone should be given, you know, a gun. Just like, you know, not every person, just because they're alive and breathing, shouldn't be able to drive. We have, you know, restrictions on who can drive, who can't drive, who, who can live alone, who can live alone. And I, I think, you know, for guns, we should all be able to have basic rights of a gun, but we need to, you know, have some, you know, ground rules at least all states should follow. So, not just give everyone a gun. I'm not exactly, you know, very fond of the whole teacher thing, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think uh, any sort of type of, you know, future policy should prevent me from owning a gun or taking away the guns I already own. You know, I I agree. I don't want I don't want it to be this hysteria of like we're taking away your guns or like what you know no i think we can definitely work on the policies we have and like modify them a little bit i don't think that 18 year olds should be able to get an ar-15 um you you're not even allowed to drink alcohol at that age um it seems a little illogical to me i don't know what i would do at 18 years old with an ar-15 um i think that I don't know. We're creating this dangerous situation by allowing people to have that. And I don't know a lot about guns if I'm being transparent, but I don't see the purpose for AR-15s like in general for public use. I think that, well, again, I mean, AR-15s, like people like to point out this gun specifically because it was used this time. And uh, yeah, of course, it's even paddock time, but it, it's, it's more of like, why is this one being singled out? Because tomorrow an AR-15 could be banned, could be put into place. There are literally thousands of types of other rifles. This is the same semi-automatic, you know, same type of caliber. They're just a different name. The reason this one's being picked out, I think, is because it's a scary looking black steel one. Yeah. Any hunting rifle that's not bolt action, it's a semi-automatic and can kill someone, you know, just as efficiently. It's all in the matter of the shooter, it's themselves. I mean, someone with like a itty bitty, you know, handgun can cause way more damage than, you know, some amateur with an AR-15. I would push back a little bit against that because I think the fact that it is an automatic an automatic rifle um, is what's causing the most damage. Like, um, realistically, like, if uh, the guy in Parkland had gone in with a handgun, would he have caused as much damage as he did than he would have with an AR-15? I mean, that's something that we can hypothe- hypothe- that we can think about. I don't know what the word is for that. Um, that's something we can think about, but um, we will never know because... Unfortunately, this is how it happened, and this is what happened with it. Um, personally, I don't, I don't necessarily see why owning a automatic rifle is needed. Um, other um, now, I've I've heard the argument of uh, as the Second Amendment states, um, the purpose of the Second Amendment is to argue, or people would argue, to um, arm yourselves in case the government does revolt and and. Uh, does turn against the people of in the public. And I've heard that argument, but then again, what are the chances? If, if the chances of that happening are are really low in the eyes of most of the public, I don't understand why automatic rifles just need to be in every household. Was a rifle used automatic? Do what? Was a rifle used by Nicholas Cruz automatic? Uh, it was an AR-15, right? It's not. It was automatic. AR-15s are semi. So real quick. Uh, Automatic rifles, assault rifles, machine guns, however you want to label it, those are heavily, heavily regulated. Like, you can't just walk into a gun store and say, I want to buy automatic. No, it, you have to get a class three weapons mm-hmm. license. And it is extreme, like you basically, like the government won't allow you to have one unless you're an arms dealer or you're doing some kind of military training. But I, like I, my AR-15s, like all, they're all semi-automatic. Yeah. Everyone that's legally registered in Houston, Texas, America, Unless you have a classic weapons license, they're all semis. So, like, we, we need to make that distinction before we continue on with this discussion because, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, state something that's that's not true. Mm-hmm. So, um, so then the, can you break down how a semi-automatic weapon works? Yeah. The one bullet per shot. So, if you have 30 bullets, you have to pull the trigger 30 times to get them all out. Whereas automatics, uh, assault weapons, that's what they are. They're a selectifier. You have to use just one trigger pull and they'll come out. So my AR-15 that I have, it is the same type of weapon as my handgun, my 9mm SD9. I have to pull every time I want a bullet to come out. So for the Florida shooting, the Sutherland uh, Spring shooting that happened a couple months ago, the Orlando shooting in the, uh, in the bar, uh, the Stephen Paddock 
well, actually, it's a little different. They were, those were all semi-automatic. They were not uh, fully automatic weapons. So, Well, in terms of like a handgun, how many bullets do you get in a handgun compared to a semi-automatic? Uh, depends on the weapon itself. Uh, for instance, my handgun, I can hold like about 12 or that has like 15. So even that, even if we're not saying that these weapons are automatic, they're still like, yes, you have to pull a trigger 30 times, but that's less time for you to have to reload. Right. So whereas like in the hypothetical that he had a handgun that has 12 rounds, that's 12 shots he has, and then he has to reload, which I know that like that period of reloading is brief, but that gives people time to like get away or react or whatever. Um, And so then I'm kind of like, well, if it's a semi-automatic and you still have to like pull the trigger 30 times, so like still, like still to me, I'm like, so then what's the point of having it compared to just having a handgun with the same functionality but less rounds? Well, I mean, there's so many mods you can do to weapons. You can get extended clips for pistols. Most uh, AR-15, you don't have to get a you know 30 round magazine. You can get 15, 10 if you want. Mm-hmm. It's I don't think policy should be made just because. Well, this guy can save a couple seconds, or there's an eight bullet difference. Let's change everything. Um, now, I'm not saying that nothing should be done again, but uh, when we make these you know, drastic, you know, drastic policies, rules, regulations, we need to really look at you know key differences and make sure we you know determine when, what weapons are we talking about specifically. You know, unfortunately, I'm not much aware about neither guns nor about the history and, and the, uh, how the amendment worked and everything, but. Uh, from what I hear and from what I understand, I see that this is the guns are generally used for defense. And uh, we, I mean, apart from having guns as a long term solution, maybe we can still look at alternatives. Taking cue from countries like Japan, I, I was just seeing a post on social media which says that they train the students in, in school uh, for, for martial arts. And also, the, uh, the cops are also trained uh, to use martial arts first and then only when it gets too violent. They encourage using the guns, uh, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, giving the license and everything there has to be more. It could be possibly more background checks. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's where I think uh, probably the guns and everything is probably uh, something which could stay. But then the policies when giving the license could could be somewhere there has to be some kind of review because uh, whatever the I mean it's still the person who's using the gun so. So maybe the person, it's it's the wrong person. Who, I mean, that's where I think we need to review the policies and, and the background checks. Yeah, I think that like maybe there should, it should just be a greater process in obtaining any kind of gun because regardless of whether it's semi-automatic, a rifle, a pistol, handgun, any kind of gun, every gun is capable of inflicting so much damage with just one bullet that this is a very dangerous weapon which is why people you know when these more mentally impaired or not very good people use guns to commit crimes they're choosing that weapon because it is a powerful weapon Mm -hmm. and so i think it should be made a bit harder to get some of these weapons and all and kind of like what uh Justin said with the Second Amendment argument, I think that he's right because, you know, that amendment was made because at the time there was a big chance that, you know, the the government might come and hurt people and everything or maybe even try to take their guns or there was just a very big situation where people needed to be armed. Mm -hmm. But in today's society, when we are looking towards our own government to make gun laws, are we really... Need, like in fear of people coming to take our weapons. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily argue that we don't need guns. Um, I think, like uh, Jordan was saying, like it is every American citizen's right to have the ability to own a gun. Yeah. Um, I would agree with what Raj is saying about the fact that um, we should have more background checks in place or something that um, a tougher screening process to to get uh, these powerful we- these powerful objects out of the ha- and hopefully it'll get the, them out of the hands that don't need them so when it comes to the current gun laws and the minimum age that you're allowed to purchase these weapons do you think that because there have been arguments that these minimum ages should be increased but 
do you think they should does it even matter these ages these minimum ages or should it be raised because when you look at recent mass shootings with this current one uh stillman douglas he was 19 the church uh, sutherland springs church shooting the gunman was 26 the las vegas shooter was 64 the virginia tech shooter was 23 um the Okios uh, University in 2012 shooter he was 43 so there's a range within the shooter in terms of age so does it even matter or you know does that argument stand I think the concern about age is more so not just to prevent school shootings but just you know even those that if this is the right term those in their right mind could use a gun and everything should certain people of certain ages have it and because, I mean, like you said, it, you can be any age and you can commit such a terrible act. But I think that the age thing is put in place in the first place because, you know, for anybody that might want a gun. We don't want a 13 year old buying. A, yeah, we wouldn't want a 13 year old buying it. And kind of like what you were saying, I'm not sure, you know, even a 18 year old should necessarily buy one. I mean, maybe if they were living alone and they wanted protection, that's understandable. But I can see why there'd be concerns about age and all that. Well, it's like, why don't we want younger kids to drink alcohol? Because we don't want them to drive and get into... But, like, it's not like we raise that age and we're like, well, it doesn't matter because it's someone who's 43 could do the same thing. Well, like, sure, but we would hope that the person who's 43 would have a better frame of mind to not drive drunk or whatever the situation is. And I think that in the case of does it matter, I mean, yeah, a little... I mean, I would say so, um, because it's just an additional thing that we're adding to make it harder for people to have like weapons again not that people shouldn't but i mean realistically what does some teenager need an ar-15 for or some type of rifle for uh, i mean i don't see the point of raising the, the age limit i mean at 18 like how is an 18 year old any different than a 19 year old how is 19 different to 20 and then to 21 I mean, how come how come an eighteen year old can go off to war and die for his country, but you can't he can't buy that same weapon in at a at a gun shop? Now, when I I don't say that it, like I, again, I don't want every eighteen year old to go out and buy a weapon just because they have their right to. But like we have two eighteen year old kids. One he just got out of high school, going maybe or he's in college or he's already in college. He's eighteen. If he's clean as a whistle and he has like no mark whatsoever on any type of you know any of his history i think he should but if we have one kid who's been in and out of foster homes or he has been you know he's on antidepressants or he is a uh, he's been evaluated psychologically a school counselor or something like that i think that should be a red flag like all right maybe we should wait on this guy maybe we should evaluate him maybe we should send someone to his house and say why do you want a weapon you know, why, why in your state why do you need it um no, the one argument I see a lot is, you know, no, 19, no 18 year old kid needs an AR-15, but at 18, like you're no longer a kid, you're an adult. The, Nicholas Cruz, he was 19, he was an adult. You, if you commit a crime at 18, you're tried as an adult. I have even 17, 16, it depends on the crime, but at that point you're an adult, you, you know what you're doing. Uh, this guy, he knew what he was doing and there were multiple reasons to stop him, but they, they just weren't, they weren't noticed, they weren't taken into account. They were reported, they just, Nothing was done about him. So I, I don't think an 18-year-old should be told no just because of his age. But you can go sign up for the Army if you want. Uh, I really don't think that really changes anything. It should be more psychological, more more history than, you know, your current, you know, day and age. Yeah, I would agree with him because I think, uh, I think we're talking about age right now. Maybe we're seeing a lot of uh, these mass shootings happening in school. If it was happening in, say, offices, are we going to say that? we were going to raise the age even more. If it was happening in, say, offices where there are more corporate world, there are more uh, people working ages more over there, and over 25 or something like that. So maybe the screening process, like how he said, maybe the background check-in, like medical history and everything has to be checked in, and also like uh, what Griffin said, uh, checking their, whether this person, it's, it's probably going to be case by case, whether this student, this uh, particular person needs it more, this individual might not. It also could depend on the area where they are, because definitely some of the regions in the United States might be a little more uh, for the stu for at least for somebody like under uh, for for the youth or somebody like who's living alone. So they might need it more. So it should be probably case by case and not just 
having the strict policies like raising the age or something like that. So the last point I want to make about this is what what President Trump had said about uh, equipping teachers who have prior experience with firearms, with guns. Do you think that teachers should be equipped with guns in their classrooms, whether it be a what are elementary, middle school, high school professor? Um, why or why not? Um, no. 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 <laughs> no. I, I mean, no, but more like why? More, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but then again, like the the cop, I don't even know who this cop or security guard who was on campus. We yeah. didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was there. Outside the building. He was there for a reason, and he didn't do his one job was to defend the kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying give teachers guns, but that now you have to learn algebra and also, you know, a gun safety course to teach mm-hmm. kids. I don't think that, I don't think every teacher should be equipped, but I mean, if you have, you know, an ex, you know, a, a lot of teachers, like, for instance, in my school, a lot of teachers were, you know, they were ex-military, ex-army, they're just teaching, was, like, they're older now, they're part-time jobs. I mean, if they have concealed carry, I mean, they're known to be, you know, if, if they're known to, I mean, you, to have some sort of background uh, of weapons and firearms and Again, they're clean as a whistle. I mean, I don't. I'm not against them concealed carrying, but you know, Mrs. Thompson, who, who's a fresh out of college, teaching you know, his world history. I don't think she should be. All right, here you go. Here's your your six hour <laughs> pistol. Use it, and you you don't want to use it. No, not not in that not in that sense. No, but, but generally more of like uh, not really. Uh, I don't. I really don't think so. Yeah, I see. A lot of problems occurring if we were just like, all right, let's arm all teachers or let's arm teachers with even all teachers with experience with guns. Um, well, I mean, first of all, we can't even give teachers like enough money to like give school, school supplies. supplies. But like, here, have a weapon. Um, that no, that doesn't seem right to me. And then also, I mean, what if this is a situation where like we have a lot of teachers having you know weapons an incident breaks out and then you have a bunch of people in the hallway and like how do you identify like who the shooter is if you're a student and you're in a body of people and you know like there's so many guns going on like as a like coming from a student perspective i would feel really uncomfortable because i'm like oh i could i could get caught in the line of fire or something like that i think also it would just be really kind of sad if you know suddenly we start equipping teachers with guns yet like you said we can't even equip them with like you know supplies we can't even bother (laughs) having them have like a higher paycheck and stuff considering what teachers do Mm -hmm. and plus you know also kind of like what we're all saying if something was to happen i feel like there it would just create more problems than saw like than be a solution and all and i can't help but feel like you know like we've said anybody could potentially commit such a terrible act like i feel like some people would take advantage of that and they might try to say oh this teacher threatened me with their gun or for all we know like what if there is a teacher who you know they might not be trusted well with a gun like there are some teachers who take antidepressants and stuff who knows if something happens well, to them one day and yeah i think in that case kind of what jordan was saying like don't give all teachers guns um but if we were going to do it, if it was going to be something that was passed, there would have to be a lot of restrictions on it in the sense of like the antidepressants that you're talking about. And if you're ex-military and make sure that you're clean or make sure that you're clean, if we are going to do it, if it is something that does pass, there need to be a lot of restrictions on it. But I don't think there's a need for it in general. So. I don't see how it's going to be helpful for something like this and mass shootings. I, I see it only maybe there are more chances of increasing uh, from students to maybe even the teachers in some cases. Uh, so I don't see this as a solution for for this problem. Uh, and also teachers, we take them or the universities take them for some for the merit for merit purpose, like they are good at something in their major or some area of interest in. Uh, this should also this should not be one of the uh, categories that they're gonna check it off and then see do you have a gun license are you now I mean uh, that's not that's not gonna help it in any way I think 
So moving on, lastly, to our campus. Um, as college students, we spent a lot of time on campus going to classes, participating in student organizations, and attending events. However, there is a concern about campus safety. When the campus carry law went into effect August 1st, 2016, it drew mixed feelings from the UACL community. The law permits those with a concealed handgun license to have a gun on campus as long as it is concealed and outside the university's exclusion zones. Chief of Police uh, Alan Hill said there, quote, there have been there have not been any incidents involving guns on campus since the campus carry law went into effect. So in your time here at UACL, what concerns, if any, do you have about overall campus safety? Well, to be transparent, um, I thought about this after the Parkland shooting happened. If this happened on our campus, I would I would not feel safe. To be clear, I just, I feel like if it were to happen, I wouldn't know where to go, what to do. Um, I wouldn't know where I would be safest. Um, and I believe it was last week when we had a fire drill. Was it last week? There was a moment where I was like, I was honestly really nervous and scared because with the shooting that just happened, he pulled the fire alarm and, um, you know, to get a group of people to go into a main area. And there was, I was with a couple of people and even a faculty member. And I was like, is this a fire drill? Is this something else? I couldn't help but feel like a sense of panic. And I don't think as a student since in my time here at UHCL that I've been properly trained or told like where to go, what to do. Um, and that makes me nervous. It makes me nervous. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, well, me personally, like, you know, if I was to see somebody, you know, just sitting down and maybe in the patio cafe eating lunch and I suddenly notice that they have like a gun next to them, like it's concealed, but, you know, don't get me wrong, we can all sometimes just tell if someone has a gun. I would be pretty nervous and I got to be honest, like whether I would know about it or not, I would possibly telling someone about that person would be something that might come across my mind. So, you know, if someone's in their right mind, then that's understandable. But I think in this climate with all that's going on, naturally, if I see someone with a gun, I'm going to be just a bit nervous and everything. I think we're not even considering the fact that about campus carry, the fact that most of our classroom doors don't have locks on them and they don't have windows to where you can look out and see if something is happening. Um, I just think that there, are, it just concerns me that there are no locks on our classroom doors in case we had to mm-hmm. lock down. But then again, if you wanted to get out, you could. I just, I think that it's an, an, an easy thing that could be implemented. That would just make a lot of sense, honestly. Well, that and like anyone can come on our campus, right? Yeah. Someone could come with a gun on our campus with the intent to shoot people and we would never know because it's not like we check who's coming in and out um there's so many students that we can't differentiate between who goes here and who doesn't actually go here so that's another thing that kind of makes me nervous too because it makes us an easy target of like well they're not going to check who's coming in and out like i can just come in here with a backpack full of what you think might be school material and you know cause some damage you guys uh, i mean concealed carry i mean i i'm trying to i'm working on mine right now I'm, if i if i had it i would have i could conceal carry it in, in here if i if i if, if i had my license i would if i could i don't have it right now uh, I, I know two former uh, classmates who who do conceal carry and they show me oh, this is what i have you know they, sh- they show me outside they pull it out and it, it, they know what they're talking about but but then again like we say that you know if, if you could see someone conceal carry if you could spot the bulge out of the side of their pants or something or their shirt you'd be like a little afraid how do i know none of you are carrying some unregistered firearm right now i don't know that i could be scared but i'm not i mean we all do have this innate fear of something happening to us you know thunder hitting us getting in the car wreck getting shot up but i mean in terms of you know <laughs> Uh, campus carry, I don't, I have no issue with that. If people can and they're qualified to, they should, they, they should if, if they wanted to. But again, not everyone must. Yeah, so continuing on that, what are your thoughts in general about the campus carry law here? Like, does that concern you? I know it concerns some of you because you just mentioned it, but does it 
is it something that impacts how you go about your day here? Are you, you, you know what I mean? Like when you attend events, when you plan for something, is this something that is actively always in your mind? Not really. I would agree with what uh, Justin was saying. There's probably more room for improvement in terms of infrastructure because I see these things maybe these are kind of easy to implement in, with the new buildings coming up and then keeping those in mind already. Uh, and also probably more awareness for the students, more training of how to use guns, just as simple as that. But saying that, I think uh, our campus security, uh, the campus police department, especially when we have events, because ISA has many events which go through like till midnight, and they always make sure that they are always there. So I feel like personally, on a personal level, from what I get the feedback, because a lot of international students go by walk to their nearby apartments, and the campus uh, police always even make sure that they go patrolling even around the nearby apartments as well. So I think they. From what I feel on a personal level, it is one of the safest universities because we haven't or experienced or heard of anything uh, which is concerning. Uh, but I think the smaller things keep happening, which is kind of a daily routine for everything. But there's always room for improvement. I agree. Um, I will say, like, I think personally that the school makes up very well for like its security and all that because. You know, everywhere I go, I see one of the security officers around, and I oh, think... police officers. Yeah, one of the police officers and everything, and I just feel like if something was to happen, they could be well-trusted because they're very well distributed out. Like, you know, like you were saying, how somebody can just walk into this school and possibly have something. I think it's very good that there are police cars parked, like, right in front of the school all the time on patrol and everything, and I it makes me feel safer and like this campus a campus that doesn't have security cameras or anything is making up for that lack of security with, with yeah with the police department and everything plus they even have it where i think you can call an officer to walk with you yep. to your car and everything so i think that the school does a good job of you know having security in case something does happen do y'all feel do you do you feel that way that the security here is i mean Cause like I mean, going it's back, good that we have security here, but there was security at my high school too. Yeah, because I want to go back to the one at Parkland. Yeah, I want to go to the point that you just made earlier about you know anybody can literally walk in campus and there's no you know way to check to see what bags are you know, what's yeah. in the bag stuff. Yeah. If we did implement that, do you think that that would be something that would a even be make sense for us no. to have as a university? And well, if it, I'm not saying what? that I don't even know what a what a good solution to that is. I'm just saying in the framework of being at a university, it's easier or more likely if I were a shooter, not that I am. But, you know, it's easier and more accessible to do something like that at a university because you know that it's less likely that people are going to be like, who's that? Because we have so many people here. And it's not necessarily that I'm trying to fix that issue because I wouldn't even know how to mitigate that. But it's more of like, well, maybe, yes, we have security here. That's great. What are ways that we can either improve that or like, what are some things like Justin said, like having locks on our doors or there's little things that we can do to make it even more safe so students can feel even you know, more comfortable in their environment. So moving on, uh, the University Life Committee met on February 22nd and discussed UHCL's active shooter prevention plans. Currently, the police offers civilian response to active shooter events courses, along with live training and a video available on their website. Ideas discussed included improving the locks on the doors, like Justin mentioned, um, developing classroom emergency plans, live notifications for the text alert system, and incorporating classes on active shooter events into faculty training. But what are some uh, what are some suggestions that you would give UHCL in order to make students, faculty, and staff more prepared for an active shooter situation? Uh, I think like, you know, when freshmen come to do the orientation where they get, you know, toward the campus, I think like if they had like a 10, 15 minute demonstration by like campus police saying, hey guys, you know, in all, in all reality, this is probably never going to happen. But if it does, this is the procedures we would go. Everyone would get like a newsletter, like an email and also in like a handout, you know, they, everyone gets like their, you know, their first day handouts from the school, something like that. At least so that they're informed. There's uh, a map of the school. Where would you go? Uh, for fire, shooter, anything like that. 
just so uh, you know, the first day, if you know, for the or the you know for the orientation for like the first time, uh, people at least for the people who students who are already, who've been here already, uh, I would know besides emails and handouts uh, for that. I, I really wouldn't know. Well, that's that, yeah, that's how I feel. Like I feel like there should be like you know. Not necessarily a drill, like a fire drill, but just some kind of process in which, you know, they have everyone go through like a, hey, this is what you should do if something happens. Because I think at the end of the day, if if people really know how exactly to handle a certain situation, the casualties can come down because, you know, people won't be too caught off guard. Because I think that's one of the things that we're still facing in society. We're still kind of shocked when these things happen. And we need to be prepared and everything without losing our better judgment and all, but just be prepared. Do you have any final comments for anything that we may have discussed today? Anything that you want to get off your chest before we close out here? Uh, I think before we, you know, really start pointing our fingers even more, I think we need to stop demonizing certain groups, certain people for what they haven't done or what they supposedly have done. Uh, And, you know, it's easy to blame someone and not do anything yourself or to just be out on the streets shouting these are the bad guys and uh, I mean for one op- this isn't like a paid you know sponsorship for the NRA uh, no nothing I-, I don't think we should be demonizing these people because of what the, the sick guy did and it's really easy to, to, to really just, just to blame them because you know they're a gun rights group and anyone who's gun rights is doesn't want to do anything and stop sick people. I don't know, it's not that. I really think if we're going to make, you know, again, if we're going to make policies and changes, we really need to focus on the facts of what these weapons are and who who can get them, but more, who can't get them. Um, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I think one of the things we should be looking at more so maybe than just the guns or maybe even laws is really trying to help just whether it be, you know, the current generations, the older generation, just trying to help the people and all like, you know, we can change laws, we can change the weapon, we can do all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, if the people aren't in their right spirits and all, then violence is always going to happen. Now, I know this sounds, you know, kind of like a big, broad thing to say because it's hard to just change human spirit or human nature. But I think that if we try to work on changing, you know, how people are and everything, maybe make people not feel as alone or like they are people that need to commit these violent acts to others, then violence won't happen as much to where then maybe we can have, you know, guns and other weapons and all. And it won't be a problem because, you know, a p- person will be in their right spirits and all that. So I think it's also at the end of the day, a big part of it is changing the people. That's just my thoughts. Um, I think coming up with ways to mitigate this topic or issue is difficult as we saw today. Um, there's a lot of different opinions going on and I'm not even sure what the right solution is but I think moving forward it's really important that we keep the conversation going I don't want to see this kind of die out and then we do nothing I want to just focus on continuing the conversation continuing to work with others and like okay like let's develop something that works whether that's here whether that's for our state or for our country whatever that looks like um I just hope that we can give people some peace of mind moving forward that like they feel safer than what we may be experiencing right now. I agree with the concept of trying to bring about a change in people generally and also uh, the possibilities of helping uh, the people who commit crime because we, I think numbers would say that people do repeated crimes so maybe they need help too so that they turn into better people uh, and also looking at uh, how we can work towards the background check for getting the license and everything. I think having these kind of conversations is going to be helpful for this generation because it's good to see that uh, all of us are, uh, are here to listen and then we understand what is good and what is not. So I think since everyone focused on uh, the, the gun rights and the Second Amendment issues, I think I kind of want to just put my focus on the Parkland kids and the 17, 16, 18, 15 year olds that are out here and using their voice and 
showing that, hey, this matters to us and we matter and our voice matters, just like every American citizen's voice matters. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing that I would take away and just to encourage all all people in the United States to, if you're passionate about something, if there's something that you feel you need to speak up for, speak up for it because you have a voice and we all have a voice to use. And that's a great way to, to wrap this up. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you to Raj, Jordan, Natalie, Troylan, and Justin for being here. For more reporting on bunch of different topics head to uhclthesignal.com like us on facebook and send us your comments suggestions to signal soundbites at uhcl this uhclthesignal.com i don't even know our email <laughs> <laughs> but be sure to send us your comments especially on these topics we're i'm definitely interested to see what you guys have to say about this and you know maybe continue on to this conversation this is going to be something that goes on i'm very sure for a very long time this is conversation and you know, and I have to say, when it came to this episode, so I was a little bit concerned about how it would go, because uh, I didn't want it to be a debate. Because you know, you see debates happen all the time on TV, where it's you know, one side opposing the other, and nothing really gets said or done. And uh, I think here, this was a really great conversation. It's a good start for hopefully, you know, to see what what can be done and what can you know we do to hopefully move forward in a more productive uh, way. So thank you guys for listening, and this is Signal Summits. Mm-hmm.